Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us here on this Monday for a detailed look at your Colorado weather forecast. I'm meteorologist Chris Bianchi, I know. Unfortunately, I have to tell you about more wind and more warmth later on this week, but the good news is the fire danger this week probably won't be quite as bad as it was last week. And also, some good news, we won't have to deal with that fire danger for our day today because it's fairly cool out there, still some fairly high relative humidity, so it's a bit of a, dr uh, a bit of a more moist atmosphere right now. So as a result, I think we are looking at mainly sunny and cool and low fire danger conditions for today. But we warm things up considerably starting tomorrow, and that'll last into your Wednesday and your Thursday and your Friday before we cool on down for next weekend. The winds start to return on your Wednesday in particular. I'll have more on that in just a second to show you how strong those winds get. Now, 24 hour snowfall amount. This is the good news. We saw some pretty decent snowfall amounts. I would call it a pretty sneaky little system that we got in the mountains. Uh, 17 inches just outside of Woodland Park. That's a pretty good amount of snow. Breckenridge, a little over a foot of snow for our friends out that way. And again, this is great news. This is just in the last 24 hours. A lot of these kind of two to three day totals are closer to about 20, 24 inches. So again, a pretty good amount of snow, good amount of water, more importantly, in the mountains. So despite the fact that here along the front range, we are bone dry, we have been for some time at this point as well. The good news is we are seeing some of that moisture in the mountains and that does continue. Still a little bit of light snow on up by Rocky Mountain National Park, northern Colorado, and also the far southern reaches of the state. A little bit of light snow continuing around Trinidad as well as in through Raton Pass. So careful there on I-25 as you move your way through the far southern reaches of our beautiful state. Today, temperatures rise up near 60 degrees. It's about five degrees below average, maybe uh, actually closer about six, seven degrees below average. We're normally in the mid 60s in the end part of April, but we're a little cooler than average. Nothing too crazy about this. And the winds, most importantly, they are light for your day today. Tomorrow will start to pick up a little bit. I'll show you where in just a second, but temperatures 50s, low 60s for the most part in eastern Colorado, 40s and 50s for the most part. As you get on up and to the mountains, our friends out in Grand Junction are topping on up at 60 degrees for your April the 25th. Tonight, temperatures drop back into the mid 30s. It's still less windy, so we're certainly grateful for that. Winds 10 to 20 miles an hour, so a little gusty at times. Nothing too crazy about that. And as we get into your day tomorrow, winds pick up a little bit here in Denver, maybe a bit more noticeable. I would say it's more breezy, not windy, but still generally light winds around for most of us for your day tomorrow. Highs warming on up into the mid 70s, and that is thanks to some southerly winds that kick on in, and those will warm us on up. So a lot of 70s for us, some low 80s for us in Lamar, 50s, 60s on up into the mountains. And then we're keeping an eye on a fire weather watch for Tuesday. That'll be due to those winds that do kick on up in southern Colorado in particular, the San Luis Valley, the southwestern corner of the state, as well as the eastern plains. We'll be looking at some of those increased fire weather conditions for your Tuesday with winds again that could gust on up to 45 miles an hour in that part of the state. Most of us looking at winds lighter than that, but again, some of those winds out by, say, Springfield, uh, Lamar, as well as Trinidad on east through Kim, that's where you could see, again, some gusts getting on up into the 40, 45 mile an hour range. I think here in Denver and along the front range, those winds should be a little bit on the lighter side. By Wednesday, those winds do start to shift a bit further north, and so we'll be talking about some slightly stronger winds as we get into your Wednesday in the Denver area. Again, not as bad as it was last Thursday or Friday, but those winds could push up that fire danger a little bit as we get into your Wednesday and especially in your Thursday and your Friday. Looks like, unfortunately, Friday in particular once again looks pretty windy and dry with increased fire danger. Temperatures for your Thursday on up into the low 80s and then we cool back down for next Saturday before we warm back up again for your Sunday and the early part of next week. So the question I keep getting from a lot of you and I kind of want to take a few minutes to explain here is why it has been so windy and so dry for so long. And that is a key question, something we keep talking about. So it's really this that's going on here. These storm systems keep missing us 
persistently just to our north. And when that happens, we get those storm, get that storm pattern just to our north. That means we get the wind from those storms. The mountains get a little snow from it, but generally speaking, along the front range, we don't get any moisture from systems this far north. Uh, this is more of a pattern that tends to take place kind of in the middle of winter, more in January, February, uh, when we see these storms kind of staying mostly to our north. When we're getting into March and April now, that is a problem because this is normally one of our wettest times of the year. Uh, April is our fourth wettest month of the year on average, and this is what we've seen so far this April. Exactly one one hundredth of an inch of total precipitation that makes it our dry start to April on record. And unfortunately, there's no real relief in sight. Even next weekend, it uh, doesn't look like we're going to get much in the way of any precipitation from this next storm system. Could get a little bit, but nothing significant in the offing. And also, by the way, no snow since March the 17th. We've only had 12 snowless Aprils on record, barring something crazy. We will make it 13 this year. And the thing that most of you have noticed has been this. Those winds that have been so persistently strong for such a long period of time. In Denver with an average wind speed of 13.4 miles an hour since April the 1st, that makes it our strongest April to date wind speed on record at DIA. The records there though, I should note, only go back to 1997. So it's not a, pr a particularly long period of time, but it is our strongest April to date wind speed in 25 years. So fairly impressive in that metric. So hopefully that kind of explains a little bit for you about why it's been so windy and so dry for so long. Basically being, it's just those storm patterns staying off to our north and a pretty strong jet stream as well. Those two uh, things are main factors, but hopefully we can flip the script here as we get into next month and get a bit more moisture and a bit of good news too with the mountains getting a pretty decent little storm of late. On more details coming up at 9 News at Noon, Chief Meteorologist Kathy Sabin is also in at 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10 on the 9 News Family of Networks this afternoon and this evening. In the meantime, again, I'm meteorologist Chris Bianchi, and have a great rest of your day.